I want to invite you back to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read again, just for emphasis sake, verses 1 and 2. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, all right. The Bible reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. I know this is a very familiar passage to a lot of us, but I want to utilize it a little differently today and lift for you a message entitled, A Low Down Shame. A low down shame. <laughs> what I want you to know about this text is that prior to our reading, Paul had been breaking down the gospel message. Mm -hmm. And by the time we reach today's text, he shifted gears. Yes. And what he has shifted gears and is now discussing how we in the body of Christ have come to the faith. Mm -hmm. And we have only come to the faith, listen to me clearly now, have only come by grace alone. <clears throat> and this grace alone comes by way of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. And I want us to be clear, because sometimes we get this message twisted. Paul right here is not giving instructions on how we are to work hard to be saved. Mm -hmm. Instead, he's talking about how we ought to have thanks in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We're in the month of Thanksgiving, right? All right. All right. We ought to be thankful in light of God's truth. And we ought to be thankful because of the work of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We commit ourselves to God not because we're guilty or because we're shameful, but we commit ourselves to God because we have the attitude of gratitude. Yes, sir. As verse 1 says, because of the mercies of God. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Amen. We ought to be living lives of gratitude. Yeah, when, we, when we understand how good God has been to us, yeah, how good he is to us, yeah, how much he loves us, yes, we ought to have attitudes of yeah. gratitude. Yeah, that should be our motivation for serving our Lord yes, is an attitude of gratitude. Uh -huh. We shouldn't be obeying God because we are filled with guilt uh -huh. and filled with shame. Uh -huh. You know, that's, that's how children are sometimes when they're, when they're caught red handed and they've done something they shouldn't been doing and you've caught them and now the parent or the guardian has dished out some type of chore yeah. or something to do and they do it because they feel that guilt. Right. They feel that shame because they've been caught, right? Yeah. But that's not what we're supposed to be operating from. Right. We should be operating from gratitude yes, for what God yeah, has done for us, mm -hmm. what he continues to do for us. I want you to know this morning that shame is just a pit stop, right. but it is not our destination. Right. We should be presenting our bodies, our text says, as a living sacrifice. We need to be allowing God to transform us from the inside out. Sometimes this is referred to as sanctification. It is when we intentionally put to practice obedience. When we intentionally put to practice 
believing in our Lord. Uh -huh. When we intentionally put to practice responding in ways that align with God. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 talks about how transforming takes place by the renewal of our minds. There has to be a renewal of our minds. I like what author Tim Keller uh, wrote about this particular subject and he explains this well by saying the gospel both motivates and frees us uh -huh. to live lives that please our creator. Uh -huh. In the gospel we find that trusting in Christ yes, brings God's full and complete favor and approval. Yes, Isn't that special? Yes. When God, listen to me, this is so important that we remember this. When God sees the believer, uh -huh. when he sees us that are in the body of Christ, yes, he doesn't see us, he sees Jesus. Amen. Amen. And his perfect obedience. Right. Do we know how awesome that is? Yeah. That God first sees Christ because he stands in the gap on our behalf. Yeah. Galatians chapter 2, uh, first, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 26 speaks of, speaks of this. When God sees the believer, he sees Jesus yeah. and his obedience. Right. It says in that, in that Galatians chapter 3, for you are all, for you are all sons of God yeah. through faith. In Christ Jesus. Yeah. Verse 27 says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Isn't that awesome? That's why God doesn't see our sinful selves anymore. He sees Christ Jesus. When we're baptized for the sins that we've committed and we're, we're now put into Christ. We put on Christ. God sees his son. And so God says to us, what he says about Jesus. With you, I am well pleased. Oh, I want you to get how awesome that is. I want you to understand how freedom comes from this mind state. You know what I'm saying? Because we got some destructive ways of thinking. This is why we ought to be thinking in this way. We ought to be understanding that, 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 that Jesus, because of what Jesus has done, he has silenced those whispers of shame in our lives. So it's highly important that we come back to this idea over and over again. We got to get this. That God loves me and he's pleased with me. Not because nothing I've done, but he's pleased with me because of what his son has done. Oh, we need to get that this morning. If we don't, if we don't, we'll easily fall into the mind trap that we are working to earn God's approval Free. with our own strength. Free. Oh, we don't want to be fooled into thinking that way because we can't earn that. God, God has blessed us with his son who has already done that work for us. And that's one mind frame, but there's also another. On the other hand is, is when we get angry with God. How many of us have gotten angry with God? You ain't got to raise your hand, but think about it. How many of us have gotten angry with God because we feel he's asking us to pull off the impossible by living a perfect life? We all know how hard that is to live a perfect life. And that's why we shouldn't be thinking like that. We need to understand that we can't do it on our strength. Christ has already done it for us. That's why we got to understand that he is pleased with us because of the work of of Christ. And you, you would drive yourself crazy trying to live a perfect life. Yes, we should strive for perfection, but we are going to fall. We are going to slip. That's why I love how Paul was led by the Holy Spirit in this writing. Because as we read this, I know that Paul wasn't a neuroscientist. He didn't, he, he's not a person or individual that, 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 that studies the brain. But he was led to the Holy Spirit, and because of the Holy Spirit, he was on to something in this writing. When he talks about how there must be a renewing of our minds. Oh, this thing gets deep, y'all. I want you to understand this morning that the wiring of our minds can be made new. Do you understand that? Do you realize that? That the, 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 the wiring of our minds can be made anew? Not so long ago, you know what? Scientists believed that the brain did not change after childhood. Did you know that? 
that it was hardwired and fixed by the time you became an adult. And many of us believe that as well. You know you do. Many of us, we got that type of thinking, don't we? Well, you are who you are, right? You're going to be who you're going to be. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Many of us get this type of thinking. We see a child and we see how they are. And we think that's how they're going to be. Huh? And we think that there ain't no changing. Oh, we see something in them, don't we? And we might, folks might have saw something in us and we think that they're going to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be like that. They're going to be something else when they grow up. Watch. And we even make bets, don't we? We make side bets. I'll be watching y'all. <laughs> but I want you to know the scientists, they, 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 they just discovered, discovered in the last decade, they discovered what our creator already knew all along. It's because of his design, our brain changes throughout our lives. Our minds are adaptable. They're like plastic. Did you know that? That's why they call it neuroplasticity. That's a big word, ain't it? Neuroplasticity. Our brains can expand. Our brains can change, right? This process is best understood in our brain's ability to create new pathways. Our brains are capable of creating new roadways in them. Do you know that? That's what we got to understand that this morning. And let you, I, want you to, I want you to know how fascinating this is when I study this thing. There are billions of roads in our minds, so to speak. There are billions of pathways in our brains. And every time we use them, you know, every time we think, every time we feel, every time we do something, we got these roads, we got these pathways in our brains that are heavily traveled. We got our favorite roads. We got our favorite pathways. Y'all see where I'm going with this? We got our favorites, and what are they called? They're called habits. That's, what we, that's our favorite roads, our favorite pathways in our minds. Those are our habits. Those are the roads in your mind that you have worn out. You wear them out because you own them all the time. You own them every day. Amen, somebody? We're, we're, we're always on those pathways. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen that road. Yes, mm -hmm. Did you know that? Because mm -hmm. we own it every day, all day. Uh -huh. We're on autopilot in those brain, on those pathways and those roads in our mind because we're so used to them. Yeah. And those roads have become strong. Yeah. Even though we're trying to wear them out, they become stronger. Yes, but guess what happens? We'll be, when we begin to think differently, when we learn something new or choose a different emotion, we start paving a brand new road. Yeah. Yeah. We start paving a brand new pathway. And you know what happens when you keep traveling that new road? Mm -hmm. hmm? The brain begins to use this pathway more and more. All right. All right. All right. This new way of thinking, this new way of feeling. And you know what? Then that new road becomes second nature. All right. All right. And the old pathway, you use it less and less. Yeah. So what happens with that old pathway that you use less and less? It weakens. Yeah. Right. Do you know how awesome our brain works? How wonderfully and fearfully made we are made by God? Right. See, this lines right up with what Paul is teaching. Right. And he taught this also in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Right. That we are to cast down every high thing yeah. that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Right. And he goes on to talk about how bringing everything through Thought, uh, everything, every ca uh, thought in the captivity mm -hmm. to the obedience of Christ. Amen. And also, Paul taught in Philippians chapter 4 to meditate on whatever things are true, yes, sir. whatever things are noble, yeah. whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, mm -hmm. whatever things are of good report. Yes, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, these are the things we're supposed to be concentrating on. Right, right, right. These are the things that we should be thinking about to create new roadways and new pathways right. in our minds. Right. Amen, somebody? Right. But some of us are a child of God and we're still traveling them same roads, yeah, well, yeah. them same pathways in our minds. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> some of us, we think that our brains are smooth. <laughs> You know what I mean? We think our brains are smooth, don't have no wrinkles on it. Because you know, them wrinkles hold knowledge. Yeah. 
right. They hold, you know what I'm saying? That's how I like to think. That's how I like to pitch it. Your brain got wrinkles in it, but some of us think our brains are smooth. It don't catch nothing. <laughs> when we learn something, ain't no wrinkles there for it to grab on hold. It's smooth, so it just roll right off, right? Some of us think like that. And we think some other folks are like that too. That's why I, I, I know some of us see each other and we think they got a smooth brain. <laughs> Well, that brain just as smooth. <laughs> we think like that, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> but I want you to know that that ain't true. <laughs> because we are wonderfully made yes, by God. Right. You can't learn new things. Your, your, your brain is capable of le learning new things. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand that there's a lot that you could do on your own. Yeah. There's a lot that you could do on your own, but we gotta learn that we can't do it by ourselves. Amen. And, and, and there ain't no shame in getting help. Right. Amen, somebody? Amen. There's no shame in getting help. If you need help, get some help. Yeah. Seek some help. Amen. And I know we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We love one another, uh -huh. but there's some things above us right. that we can't handle, right. that we don't understand. Right. So there's nothing wrong with getting some professional help. Right. You might need to see a therapist. You might need to see a psychiatrist. You might need some counseling. Amen, somebody? Because there's no shame in letting folks help you. Because there's a level of shame, there's a level of hurt that we don't understand. People are going through stuff that we don't understand sometimes. That's why we got to lovingly and tenderly approach one another. Because we don't know what somebody else is wrestling with. We don't know the level of shame that they're dealing with. Because our enemy, he wants you to stay right there. Yeah, he wants you to dwell on that shame that you have. You know, when we're a child of God, shame is a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Especially when we first come to Christ. Right. That's how we, 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 when we obey the gospel, we brought face to face with our sin. Yes, we're brought face to face with our guilt. Right. Mm -hmm. That's only by way of the Holy Spirit yes, that we're brought to Christ. Amen, somebody? And then all that sin, all that mess, all that dirt in our lives is revealed to us. Yeah. And we become sorrowful. We become shamed, right? right. But we can't stay there. Right. But it's sad, y'all. A lot of us are still there. Uh -huh. We're still dealing with hurt. We're still dealing with shame. And our enemy wants us to stay right there. He don't want you to create no new pathways in your mind. Right. But... God wants us to know that he has a redemption plan for us. Right. Don't you know the enemy is still using the same tactic he used in the garden yeah. with Adam and Eve? We talked about this not too long ago in Tuesday night class. What happened after they disobeyed God? They were ashamed. Mm -hmm. before, before that, they were naked with no problem. Right. But now all of a sudden they disobeyed God mm -hmm. and now they ran and hid. Well, well. Amen. Yeah. And then that, that, that's, how, that's how the enemy wants us. He wants us to stay right there. Uh -huh. He wants us to run and hide from God when we're disobedient. Right. He wants us to run and hide and, and wallow in that shame, wallow in that, in that sorrow and that despair. Because that's what he, he wants of us. He uses our shame as a weapon uh -huh. right. against us. Oh, you know, because, you know, you know, you know, if we're not careful, y'all, our shame can be like a disease mm -hmm. that just breaks us down over time, right? And when we're, when we're stuck in that shame, when we're stuck in that shameful mind state, it breaks up our relationships with other people. And it breaks up our relationship with God. And you know, as we get a little deeper into this, this subject, I want you to know that it's hard to talk about shame without talking about emotions. Because uh -huh. emotions is a part of it, isn't it? Uh -huh. Emotions, they flood our minds when we deal with shame. You know, when we talk about emotions, we're talking about things like love, uh -huh. things like hate, uh -huh. things like happiness or fear. Uh -huh. Because emotions are the driving force behind many of our behaviors, aren't they? Uh -huh. They, 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 shame, you know, you know, you know emotions, they can be helpful and they can be unhelpful. Because our brains are wired to detect threats and rewards, right? When our brains detect a potential threat, it releases the stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, which prepares for fight or flight. 
Yeah. Did you know that? You see how we're wonderfully made? Yeah. You see how the Lord made us? We, 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 he designed us this way. That's what emotions do. You either, when you, when, you, when, you, when you come in contact with a potential threat, you either fight or flight. And it just kicks in, don't it? A lot of times you don't even think about it because that emotion kicks in and either you ready to run or you ready to fight. That's what emotions does to us. They're either helpful or they're unhelpful, right? But on the other hand, when you detect a reward, our, our brain releases dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. These are the chemicals that make us feel good and motivate us to continue the task or behavior. All right. But I want you to know in both cases, the feeling region of the brain kicks in before the thinking part. Yep. Well, well. Right. Think about that. Think about that. The feeling region of the brain kicks in before the thinking part. Sometimes the reactions of the feeling are so strong that it dominates our behaviors. Well, well. And we're unable to think rationally at the moment. Right. Many of our emotional responses happen subconsciously. Mm -hmm. But our thinking can influence those emotions. Yeah, yeah. Stay with me now. I said all of that to say that emotions are not necessarily a bad thing. Right. They can help you gauge what's going on. Right. They can help you process things, right? Uh -huh. Those emotions can help you learn something. They can help you grow. Uh -huh. But understanding our emotions can help us take greater control of our brain. Right. We got to understand our emotions, don't we? Yes, sir. Amen? Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't pay attention to our emotions, right? Mm -hmm. but, 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 but we can take control of our brains if we learn how those emotions affect us. Mm -hmm. We can use them to help us know when something is off. Yep. Those emotions help you know when something is off, don't they? Yes. If we pay attention, they can help us know we're in danger or that a relationship needs some extra attention. Mm -hmm. Those emotions can help us understand that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They can heighten good experiences and they can help us build connections as we share and empathize with one another. That's what's so awesome about learning how our emotions work. See, God wants us to know today that you're not enslaved by your past. All right. Amen, somebody? Amen. You're not enslaved by your past. The world would have you to believe that you, 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 you know, you, that you're like this, like we talked about earlier, you're like this and this is how you're going to be. And don't you know a lot of us feel like we, could, we, we pass this behavior on to our children? Think about that. We, we, we pass this on to the young people that we encounter, that are around us. That's how strong this way of thinking is. We think we pass it on, that you're going to end up like your daddy. You're going to end up like your mama. You're just like your grandmama. You're just like your granddaddy. And none of that is really true, is it? But we say it a lot, don't we? God wants you to know that that's not true. You can be different. Yes, sir. Your mind can change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can overcome ways of thinking. Right. What is true is that you got to deal with your problems. All right. That's what's true. Yeah. We got to deal with nothing is going to change if you don't deal with it. Come on, bro. Right. If we don't allow God to work in our lives, if we don't allow God to deliver us from this way of thinking, we will stay the same. Yeah. But we have to deal with it. Right. That's why we got to have faith in the Lord. That one day he will rescue us. One day we don't have to deal with our issues like this anymore. That's what we need to understand and believe. But until that day comes, we got to deal with shame sometimes. We got to experience the weight of shame. And sometimes, you know, shame, y'all, it'll get buried deep in our brains. And it lives there rent free sometimes. Amen. It lives there because of how we think about ourselves. Right. It lives there because how we've allowed other people's words to dictate how we think about mm -hmm. ourselves. But healing, it comes by facing that shame with God. We got to approach that shame with God. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to know that the Lord has a shame shovel. Right. Yes, sir. He's the only one that can dig that mess out of our brains. Yeah. And, and, and let us not just memorize scriptures, y'all, but let us intentionally 
allow those scriptures to, to penetrate our hearts, to penetrate our minds, that's when real progress comes about. By allowing God's word to <laughs> excuse me, pave those new roadways and pave no, those new pathways in our mind. We got to be careful, y'all, about how we stick to ways of thinking. And you know, as I get older, and I got young people now, <laughs> we got to be aware of the stories that we tell ourselves. <laughs> Not only the story that we tell ourselves, but the stories others tell about us. Because them things can grow in your mind. They can take root in your mind. Because, you know, a lot of times we leave them stories on repeat. And you know what happened with them stories? They get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in your mind. And they become entangled with how you view yourself. And you know what? As older people, we got to be mindful of this. Especially for our young folks. You know, because I'm guilty of this, y'all. Uh, how many of y'all going to be uh, uh, honest with me this morning? When you think like, well, I don't know about that new generation. <laughs> how many of us just put them all together? Y'all know y'all do it. I don't know about this new generation. Do we listen to ourselves when we say that? And our young people hear it? Think about that. I don't know about these young folks these days. I don't know about this new generation. What, don't we say stuff like that? Yeah. They lazy. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to work. Right. They want everything given to them. See, Brother Gordon know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> they disrespectful. Yes, sir. But we would just like them. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody? Amen. You know, and then, but you know what? A lot of times we try to act like we weren't like that. Well. <laughs> I wasn't like that. Yeah, you were. Right. You had a lot of them same ways. Yeah, right, but we say stuff like that around our, our young people, don't we? Mm -hmm. We got to be careful about this family. Because mm -hmm. even though we love them, even though we want what's best for them, we can still trigger shame right. in other folks unaware. Yeah. Do you realize that? Do you know young minds can become shameful? Because of the words we say to them. Because we can make them feel bad sometimes about themselves. And we do that to one another as well. Don't you know that this shame can take root in our minds and in our brains. And it can dictate how we feel and how we view ourselves. Do we understand that? We got to be careful, y'all. And, and, and our young people, the sooner you understand this, the better off you'll be. The better off you'll be. Because you will waste years away of your life. You'll be a prisoner of the whispers of the devil. Right, Having you thinking that you ain't nothing. Right. And that you're never going to be nothing. So mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Do y'all understand how this shame can, can, can shape our minds? Mm -hmm. How those roadways, how those pathways can get stuck in our brains? Right. Oh, we got to be careful, y'all. Yes, That's the same way God... Had to, had to come to Adam and Eve, didn't he? Yes, he did. Oh, when they were in the garden and they were dealing with that shame, when they were hiding yes. from God, God had to come to them. Amen. They didn't want to come out, right. but God wanted to lovingly restore them. Yes. Yes. He wanted to create a new story in their minds. Uh -huh. And he wanted to create a mind, uh, in their minds a story that is true because the devil wants to feed you a lie. He wants to give you a lie that will destroy your minds if we don't allow the Lord to work in our lives. Because God already knows about all of our struggles. And he's the cure for our struggles. That's why we got to trust him. Quit hiding in your shame. A lot of us hide in our minds. We hide in the shame of our minds. We hide in that darkness on that lonely road in our minds by ourselves. Mm. That's where the enemy wants you to stay, y'all. Right. But we can't allow him to do that to us. But you know what? At the same time, I don't want you to ignore your problems either. But I, but I do want you to understand, don't ignore your problems, but don't make your problems become your identity. All right. That's good. That's good. 
That's what you need to understand. Mm-hmm. Your problems don't identify you. Come on, brother. Right. That's a good point. <sighs> Your shame doesn't identify you. Right. If you're a child of God. Right. Oh, we got to know how beautiful that is. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. When we change our mindset about who we are in Christ right. and that we are God's beloved. Yes, sir. We are recognized as his children. Right. Do you know the freedom that comes with that? Right. Woo! <laughs> but a lot of us are shackled down by that weight of shame. Mm-hmm. Right. Barely moving through life. Okay. Not realizing that we're free to live new lives. Yeah, because of the renewing of our minds, there can be a transformation in our lives. I would run right now, but I ain't going to do it. You've been free to run with the Lord. But a lot of us are allowing the shame, the sorrow, the grief to hold us down. And the enemy likes to, you to get stay right there. He wants you to be rooted in that. It's important that the stories that we tell ourselves are not rooted in our abilities either. Right. Our, 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 our stories got to be rooted in how the Lord sees us. Amen. This is why we got to find our identity in Christ That's right. rather than allowing shame to define who you are. Mm-hmm. Because like I said before, I can't say this enough. Shame likes to take root in your mind. Mm-hmm. And it likes to control how you think about yourself. Mm-hmm. Amen, somebody? Amen. And that's why we got to be centered on who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. We got to understand that. You're not the same no more. Amen. If you're in Christ Jesus, you are not the same person Amen. anymore. Amen. You are free now Amen. to live a new life. Amen. You don't got to be held down by that shame anymore. Right. You don't got to be held down by that grief anymore. Amen. You don't got to be held down by that sorrow anymore. Amen. You can live a new life. Yeah. Do we understand how important that is? Yes, Oh, because when we don't understand that, we'll try to do things on our own to identify who we are. Mm -hmm. That's why we got some folks that they won't rest until they get that certain job. Because I need this to identify who I am. Mm -hmm. Then we got our young people. I got to make the team. Mm -hmm. I got to make the team because people used to laugh at me. People used to joke on me, but I show them. Good. When I make the team, on, when the coach start looking at me and putting me in and I get some PT, oh, I'll show y'all then. Yeah. That's how we want to identify ourselves. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. We feel like I need that I, I, to identify who we are. Right. When I get these, these extra commas on my check, oh, I'll show them then. Yeah. Yeah. They used to laugh at me for having holes in my shoes, but I'm going to show them when I get that check, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Let us be careful not to get that type of thinking. You know, because some of us feel like I got to marry that perfect person. I got to have those perfect kids, that perfect house, and that perfect dog. Or cat, I don't know whatever it is you like. <laughs> I got to have that. And we get centered on these goals. But I, wanna, I want you to stop that way of thinking. Because that's not what defines who you are. You got to set your goal higher than that. Amen, somebody? Oh, man. (laughs) And you know what? We need to quit allowing that statement, I am, to dictate our lives as well. You know, a lot of times we like to say, I am this and I am that. You know, a lot of times we think the same thing that I am just nobody. I am just, you know, just this, 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 this broken person. You know, I never change. I am this person that talks this way. I walk this way. You just got to deal with it because that's just who I am. That is powerful. 
But I want you to know what's more powerful than that. Amen. When God says who you are. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, ain't nothing got more power than when God says you are. That's right. Because we need to concentrate on God's words in, in, this, in the Bible. Like when we hear in John chapter 15, you are my friends. Yeah. If you do whatever I command you. Amen. Oh, in Galatians chapter 3 when he says, for you are all sons of God right. through faith in Christ Jesus. Right. Or in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. And verse 10 says, and you are complete. You're completing him. That's the only way you're going to be complete is when you're in Christ Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. Do you know who has the power? Do you know who has all control? That's when we're complete, when we're in Christ Jesus. Let the Lord tell you who you are. Stop letting other folks identify who you are. Stop trying to identify yourself and let the Lord tell you who you are. Do we realize how powerful that is? Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you are a new creation. You ain't the same no more. Why are you still living like your old life? Right before you hit the waters of baptism, you come up and you still thinking, you still walking, you still talking, you still acting the same. Why? Why? You are free to live a new life. Oh, you're going to have shame. Oh, you're going to have sorrow. But that's just a pit stop. Don't you dare stop there. Move on. We all going to mess up. That's why we got to learn that I can't be ashamed about what I did. Right. Yeah, yeah, that regret going to hold you for a little while, yeah. but you can't stop there. Can't. Don't let that be your destination. Yes, the enemy wants you to sit down right there in that come sorrow. On, on. He wants you to sit down in that shame. Yep. Some of us strap our seatbelt on because we feel like we ain't going nowhere else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord doesn't want that for us. That's why you got to learn how to shake it off. When you're in Christ Jesus, you can shake that thing off. Oh, that's the beauty of being in Christ Jesus. You can shake that thing off and keep moving. Because our Lord reminds us that you ain't perfect, but my son is perfect. Oh, that's why you got to be in Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. Oh, that's what I wanted to remind you today. Don't allow that low down, dirty shame. To dictate who you are. Amen. 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 A lot of us need to realize that this morning. We need to be the, the church that the Lord intended us to be. Yeah. How are we going to help other folks yes, transform change. and renew their minds and change for the Lord's sake if we haven't done it? Well, well, well. Oh, you know how awesome and how fascinating it'll be when other folks see our transformed lives? Oh, because we're not held down by that shameful thing that we did? Oh, I know a lot of us have done some low-down, dirty things. Amen, I know I ain't alone. Oh, there's some things that has haunted me for years. Oh, and I'm just now getting to a place where I can let go of that thing because the Lord ain't worried about it no more. He said, you my child. Yeah. You're in Christ Jesus. Why are you still holding on to what you did a long time ago? Oh, we allow that stuff to hold us down and we don't grow. That's what Satan wants you. But if you're in Christ Jesus, you ain't got to live like that no more. You got a new life every day. The blood of Christ keeps on cleansing us each and every day. We're loved. We got to know that God sees us in Christ Jesus, he says, I am well pleased. Right, right, right. Oh, you got to understand that. Yes, and when you understand that, you can go forward in life. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, somebody. Yes, That's all I wanted to share with you today. Good. That's all I have for you today. Yes. If you're here today and you're not a child of God, hear the word of God. Yes. Don't just be one of those hearers that just, oh, I want to memorize scripture so I can quote it back and sound fancy. Yes, no. Believe it. Yes, Believe in the gospel message. Yes, Believe how the Lord loved us so much that he sent the very best. Yes. He sent himself by way of Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, 
Oh, he lived a sin-free life. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Amen. He dealt with our shame on our behalf. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. Amen. He dealt with that grief on our behalf so that we ain't got to be bothered with it. Right. Oh, he put on humanity so we can put him on. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. You know how beautiful that is? Yes. Oh, be willing to repent of your past sins. Be willing to turn the other way. Live for the Lord. You ain't got to live for the Satan no more because all of us at one time were living for Satan. Amen, somebody? But you ain't got to live that way no more. When you come into contact with that baptismal water and the Lord cleanses you up, oh, you're cleansed, you're made anew. Oh, you can start a new life in the Lord. Oh, that's what we want for you today if you haven't obeyed the gospel. Yes, don't put it off any longer. Right. Oh, we see folks dying every day, don't we? Amen. We don't know when our numbers going to come up. Right, right, right. Amen, somebody? Right. You do not know when your numbers come up. Right. We still got water in this baptismal pool right here. You ain't got to wait on the new one that just got put in the other day on Cap, y'all. <laughs> Amen, somebody sitting right there right now talking about, I want to be the first to get in that yeah, baptismal yeah, pool. Yeah, yeah. Don't you wait on that. Right. Don't you wait on that because your expiration date could come before the end. Amen, somebody? Amen. You better. We got water right here. You ain't got to go to no other church building. We got it right here. Yeah, it may be a little cold, but don't worry about that. Your sins are washed all away. That's more important. Amen? Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. And then when we become a child of God, we live faithful unto death. Yeah, you ain't going to be perfect. Yeah, you're going to fall. Yeah, you're going to have shame. Yeah, you're going to have sorrow and grief, but don't you stay there. Amen. You keep walking and having an attitude of gratitude for the Lord. And if you're here today and you might just need prayer, share it with the congregation right now so we can pray for you. Do you know the power of prayer? Do you know how many people walked out of a hospital bed because somebody prayed for them? Do you know how somebody got over a death in the family because somebody prayed for them? Do you know how somebody got over a hurt in their life because somebody else prayed for them? Amen. Don't you need, you need to know the power of prayer? Yes, sir. Amen. We didn't just come in here to praise God. We came in here to lift one another up. Yes, sir. That's what we're here for. Sick, sinus infection at all. We're going to lift one another up. Amen. <laughs> We're going to have a verse of a song. If you need to respond, do it right now. I've got a made up mind. Yeah. 